Okay, so we're now going to be building this um, Ajax functionality, and we're going to be obviously using, um, not using any libraries like jQuery. So let's go ahead and just start to build this out. And the first thing I'm going to do is uh, create a global app variable within Ajax.js. You can see that I'm already including this file onto the page, so all we need to do is start filling this in. Let's go ahead and create this app variable then. And this is basically just going to be a function. So what we're going to do is obviously have this as executing. So all we need to do is go ahead and provide this here. So anything inside of here then will be run like so. So let's go ahead and just uh, head over to Chrome and refresh and we see hello. So app is automatically run as soon as the page is hit. So within this now, what we're going to go ahead and do is actually do something like return an object. And we, the reason we do this is then what we can do is return a specific object with different properties that we can then use as part of this app. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and use the use strict statement here. And this is validated through uh, JS Lint. So we're going to return an object. Now this object is going to contain one property, or one method if you like, and this is a function. So this is the Ajax function that we're going to be building. So how do we call this? Well, let's just take a look at doing a console log in here. And let's go ahead and look at running the page again. Obviously, nothing's going to happen this time. We're not going to get this console output. But if we head over to index.html and we say app.ajax and we call this method, when we go ahead and refresh, we now see this hello output. So we can now call this method and we can go ahead and pass in any arguments we want. In this case, we're going to have the URL. We're going to have a success callback. And we're going to have an error callback. So remember, when we created this here, we had app.ajax, and then we had when we can provide a URL here, then we can go ahead and provide a function here, and we can also provide a function here. So let's do a console.log error, and up here, let's go ahead and do a console.log success and let's go ahead and choose the file name that we want to ajax to in this case it's file.json which is just basically a valid json uh, string in here so let's go ahead and say file.json is what we want to ajax to so what we're going to need to do now is inside of the uh, ajax.js file we need to go ahead and create a variable and this is a new xml http request and we're going to base this on the fact that a XML HTTP request is available. Otherwise, what we're going to do is we're going to create an active X object. And this is for older versions of IE. So let's go ahead and create this variable. It's an X. We're going to call it X, XML HTTP. And this is going to basically be a ternary operation to check whether window.xml HTTP request is available. And this is what allows us to actually perform the Ajax request. So I'm going to do window.xml HTTP request. So if that's available, what do we want to do? Well, we want to assign XML HTTP a new window.xml HTTP request. Now, otherwise, what we want to do is we want to assign it a new window dot active x object and then in brackets this is going to be microsoft dot xml http so let's just run through that again quickly we have said create a variable if window dot xml http request is available instantiate this and store it here otherwise instantiate this and store it here 
So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and uh, do something else. This is going to be actually opening the request. So let's go ahead and say XML HTTP dot open. And let's go ahead and choose a method that we want to open this with. In this case, it's just going to be get. We're not going to provide any option in this wrapper. We're just going to always open the request as a get request. So we're now going to say URL and we pass true. So what's going to happen now is the URL is going to be passed here. And this will go ahead and open it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say XML HTTP dot send. So we're actually sending the request now. So this completes our Ajax request. We can head over to our browser and check that this is actually done. So let's go over to the network tab and hit refresh. And you can see here that we've got a get request to file.json, which is what we expected because we provided that in the code on index.html here. So now what we're going to do is look at actually running the callbacks based on this. But we need to only do this once our, we have a request complete and a 200 OK response code. So what we need to do is we need to create a um, an event handler for the XML HTTP object. And this is on ready state change. So we say XML HTTP dot on ready state change and we create a function here so this function will run when the state changes basically or when we send a request so i'm going to go ahead and type hello in there so head over to my browser and hit refresh accessing the console you can see that we've got hello here so that's worked so what we're now going to do in here is we need to check some particular things because we need to check that the ready state is equal to four. That's a request complete. And we need to check that the status is 200, which is an OK status. So let's nest a couple of if statements in here. We're going to say if XML HTTP dot ready state equals, remember the triple equals for type comparison, if that equals four, then the request is complete. Now we're going to nest again an if statement and say XML HTTP dot status equals 200. Then we're OK. So let's console dot log all OK. So let's go ahead and uh, refresh the browser and we get all OK. So this is all good. Now it's all well and good checking these properties, but how do we actually know you know how to access them. Well, let's go down here and just go ahead and investigate the XML HTTP object. So if we go ahead and refresh now, you see that we get this out. We can see the status here. We can see the uh, response type. We can see the status text and we can see a variety of other different things as well. So that's how we know what to expect here. So let's now go ahead and actually create some more functionality in here. Notably, what we need to do is run the callbacks as well. So the callback is going to basically just, you know, call the function that we pass through in index.html. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if type of callback is a function. So we need to make sure this is actually a function because otherwise there's no point actually calling it, we're going to go ahead and run the callback. Now what we also need to do is we need to add an else to this status check because if the status isn't OK, that means we have an error. So we go ahead then and we say if type of error is a function, run the error. So we can go ahead and we can check that this, these, both these callbacks work because what we've actually done is we've done a console log success and a console log, log error in this callback and in this callback. Let's go ahead and check this then. So if we refresh, we see success. We can go ahead and easily just change this to files.json just to force an error. And you see we get an error within the browser and we get the error here. So we can handle these errors gracefully if we want. Let's go ahead and change that back to file and head back over to ajax.js. 
Now we need to do a couple more things in here because just running the callback isn't really good enough. What we need to do is give response text back and the original XML HTTP object so the user has more control over what they want to do with it. So inside of uh, index.html, within this function, what do we want to see brought back? Well, we want the data and we want the XML HTTP object returned as well. For the error, we want the actual error itself and also the XML HTTP object, just in case in here we want to do any additional output. So I'm going to say error and then I'm going to uh, basically comma separate this and say error. So whatever's passed back here, we can output here. So for the data, which is notably the most important thing, how do we get this data? Well, this is basically accessing the response text that we saw earlier when we did a console log on the XML HTTP object. So all we need to do here is pass XML HTTP dot response text. And we also then pass the original XML HTTP object as we've seen here. So now instead of console logging success, we'll console log data so we can actually start to see things happen here. Now with the error, we need to say XML HTTP dot status text. Because this is errored, we know that this will be an error. And we also want to pass the XML HTTP object back as well. So what are we expecting to see? Well, we're hitting file.json. We're then running this callback that we've passed through here, passing in the data, which is the XML HTTP dot response text. And then we can access it within here. We're just console logging it. So we should now expect to see the JSON object in here. Now, bear in mind, at the moment, this is only just a string. We're going to go ahead and parse the JSON uh, that we get back and go ahead and just console log the name as an example. In terms of the actual code that we've created for our uh, Ajax um, functionality here, this is all done. So inside of here, let's go ahead and just redefine data as json.parse data. And then we'll go ahead and console log data.name. In fact, let's go ahead and console log data just so we can see how this now looks. It looks like this. So it's now an object with a property of name and a value of Alex. We can go ahead and access that property by doing dot name and that outputs Alex. So that's how to Ajax to a file. We've Ajax to a JSON file and we've parsed it and brought it back. We've got a callback there for a success and a callback there for uh, an error. And we can successfully hit a URL and do what we want with the result.